now we'll learn about the carpal tunnel what we have here is the articulated hand this is the right hand uh, why I said this is the right hand is because this is the thumb it has only two phalanges and uh, this is the first metacarpal and uh, this is the uh, medial side so this is lateral first let me get you oriented this is lateral this is medial this is anterior and this is posterior aspect so now we are going to name the carpal bones we are focusing only on the carpal bones now we are going to name the carpal bones carpal bones contains two rows of bones there are total eight number of bones the proximal row contains four bones and the distal row contains four bones together making eight bones the proximal row contains scaphoid lunate triquetral and pisiform triquetral and pisiform are two bones so you have scaphoid lunate triquetral and pisiform the distal row contains trapezium which is articulating with the base of the first metacarpal trapezoid capitate and hamate hamate has a characteristic hook which is called the hook of the hamate and that is directed uh, anteriorly so these are the eight bones the scaphoid lunate triquetral pisiform the trapezium trapezoid capitate and hamate these eight bones are not uh, located in a single plane a single flat plane they are actually uh, curved they are actually cupped like 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 this in such a way that the scaphoid has a tubercle the tubercle of the scaphoid and the pisiform are more anterior the crust of the trapezium and the hook of the hamate are also more anterior so it is basically curved like this so we'll understand that when we look at the spatial aspect i'm going to imagine uh, i'm going to create the same carpal bones in the space so you have a scaphoid a lunate triquetral and pisiform so you can see the characteristic curve that is occurring the scaphoid and the pisiform is more anterior compared to the lunate and the triquetral so you have scaphoid especially the tubercle of the scaphoid is projecting anteriorly then the lunate then the triquetral and then the pisiform which is directed anteriorly so you can see a, a, an anteriorly directed concavity for the proximal row similarly on the distal row also you have an anterior directed co concavity which is produced by the crust of the trapezium which is directed more anteriorly then the trapezoid the capitate and the hook of the hamate hamate with this hook projecting anteriorly so if i review this once more you have scaphoid lunate triquetral and pisiform the trapezium trapezoid capitate and the hamate so you can see the anteriorly directed concavity for both of these uh, row carpal bones both through the proximal and the distal row carpal bones and together we can form uh, you can call this formation as a carpal groove so you need to know that the four bones the trape the uh, scaphoid trapezium and the pisiform and the hamate are directed more anteriorly compared to the rest of the bones so together it forms a carpal groove and the carpal groove these four bones gives attachment to a tough fibrous sheet and that tough fibrous sheet is called the flexor retinaculum and the flexor retinaculum will convert the carpal groove into a carpal tunnel so you have a closed space in the wrist formed by the carpal groove posteriorly with the flexor retinaculum creating uh, bounding more anteriorly creating the carpal tunnel carpal tunnel is a very clinically important structure because of the structures that passes through it the nerve that runs through the carpal tunnel is the median nerve and that is at risk when the carpal tunnel has some pressure inside it has a, some intracompartmental pressure inside it and that can compress the median nerve and cause median nerve entrapments uh, condition uh, distal to the carpal tunnel the other contents within the carpal tunnel are the four tendons towards the digits you have two sets of four tendons you have a flexor digitorum superficial is running uh, in the uh, in the superficial aspect and the flexor digitorum profundus running in the deeper aspect so together forming eight tendons and one flexor pollicis longus tendon which is on the lateral aspect on the thumb side you have a flexor pollicis longus so you have flexor digitorum superficial is four tendons flexor digitorum profundus four tendons and flexor pollicis longus one tendon the fds and the fdp tendons are enclosed by a synovial sheath called ulnar bursa and the fpl tendon is enclosed by the radial bursa so all these contents with the median nerve the nine tendons 
its uh, synovial sheets and the median nerve are running through the carpal tunnel formed by the carpal groove posteriorly and the flexor maculum anteriorly, making this region extremely important in clinical medicine.